Find the locus of points p, x, comma, y such that the distance from p to the y-axis is pi. So the locus of points means the set of all points p such that the distance from each of these points to the y-axis is pi. Okay? So basically, graphically, what this means is that this is the y-axis, as you know, and the distance from this y-axis on both sides of it should be exactly 5. So the locus in this case will be a straight line. right? So we can count 5 boxes to the right and left from the y-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is going to be a, a vertical line parallel to the y-axis, as you can see here. And also 5 to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Like this. Okay, so these are the respective equations. x is equal to 5 and x is equal to minus 5. Okay, now to confirm this result algebraically, notice that first of all, this is a locus, right? So this straight line defines a locus because it contains all possible points such that from each of these points to the y-axis, the distance is going to be 5. And that concerns both of these equations, right? So you can think of it as loci. Right? Uh, plural version of the locus, right? Because there are two lines, two such lines. So to confirm this algebraically, we can use the distance formula. So what we can do now is that we can assign a variable point on the y-axis. Why I say variable? Because on the y-axis there, there can be millions of different points, right? Millions of points. So I can say variable point or a random point, whichever you want to think of, or arbitrary point, arbitrary, is on the y-axis is 0, comma, y. Right? Because the x value here is going to be always 0 on the y-axis, no matter where you go. But since you go up and down, your y coordinate will be a variable because it depends on where you are. You could be above the x-axis, you could be on the x-axis, you could be below the x-axis, right? There are millions of possible y values. So that's why this is an arbitrary point on the y-axis. So now we have two points, basically, right? We have two available coordinates. And these are variable points, right? Because one of, one of these points will be on either of these lines, this point precisely, and this point will be on the y-axis. So we can use the distance formula to find uh, the actual equations. Okay, So the distance formula, the distance from this point to this point, is going to be exactly 5. So the distance is 5, and we know also the distance is going to be given by the distance formula x minus 0 squared plus y coordinate from this point on uh, on either one of these equations, either one of these vertical lines, y minus this y, arbitrary uh, y coordinate on the y axis, so y minus y squared, right? So we know that. So now we can use the substitution. We can say 5 is equal to this, to this side, right? The right side of the d is equal to the right side of of the d for this equation, right? Because both of them are equal to d, thus we can set each of the right sides equal as well, right? So this is x minus 0 squared is going to be simply x squared, and y minus y is 0 squared, right? So that means that, means that 5 is equal to square root of the x squared. Now here's the way to go from there. Don't just say x is equal to 5. You might be tempted to just to just say, well, x squared square root means it's going to be x. Well, before you do that, get rid of the square root, actually. Get rid of the square root by squaring. So what we're going to do, we're going to square, we're going to square both sides. Okay, we're going to square both sides. Okay, you see I'm squaring both sides to get rid of the square root. All right, I'm squaring it so that as a result, look what's going to happen. We're going to have a 25 being equal to x squared, right? Because squaring the x squared, uh, squaring the square root gets rid of it on the right side. 
and squaring the left side gives us 25. And now we can take the square root, right? Because now we can write it as x squared, x squared is equal to 25, right? We can just switch sides and that's fine. x squared is equal to 25. And as a result, we can square root both sides now. We know the square root of x squared is equal to plus minus the square root of 25, right? So that means we get x, right? Because square rooting the x squared gives you just x, right? So x is equal to what? Plus minus 5. Right, because plus minus square root of 25 is plus minus 5. So as you can see, there are two equations that we have. x is equal to 5, and x is equal to minus 5. And notice that it corresponds exactly to what we've uh, determined graphically, that uh, the lines, ver uh, vertical lines parallel to the y-axis are the low chi. This is an algebraic verification of that. Alternative method to this would be to use the formula um, that gives you the distance from a point to a line, okay? So the distance formula from a point to a line is going to be this. A x1 plus b y1 plus c divided by square root of a squared plus b squared, okay? So the distance that we know here is equal to 5, and we're talking about a line and a point, okay? And these components, the line will be this, ax plus by plus c is equal to zero, and the point will be x1 comma y1, okay? So how do you find that? So x1 comma y1 is going to be a point on any of these two, any of these two lines, right? So we, we will leave that alone. And a, b, and c coefficients are the coefficients speaking of the line. And the line will be the y-axis line, right? And the y-axis line, as you know, has equation x is equal to 0. Okay? So the a value, as if you compare it here, the a value is here, right? It's 1, right? This is 1x, which is the a value. Now, x1, y1, we don't know what that is, right? Because it's arbitrary. Because x can be 5 or x can be negative 5. So we can't say it's 5 for sure. We can't say it's negative 5, right? It can vary. And so do the y values, right? Because they can be infinitely many things. So we're going to leave that as it is. And instead of x1, we're just going to write x and y. Okay, so if we fill this out now, we will get the absolute value of 1 times x1. And let's just write x because there's, there's no other x that's going to exist, right? So 1x plus, now the b value in this equation is 0, right? Because you don't see any y's here, do you? You just see the x is equal to 0, right? So b and c are 0 here. So that means 0 times y. Right? So instead of y1, we write a y plus the c value. c value is also 0, right? because there's nothing else except the x on the left side. If you compare the given equation, the y-axis equation, and the formula equation here. So plus 0 for the c, okay, absolute value bar closed, divided by a squared plus b squared. Now the a value is 1, right? so we can square that, we can write a. We can write 1, 1 squared, plus, now the b value was 0, right? Because there was, no, there was no y here on the left side except the x, so the b is 0, so 0 squared. Now look what happens. We get 5 is equal to the absolute value x and nothing else, right? Everything is 0. And divided by square root of 1, right? Square root of 1 is still 1. So the result is 5 is equal to square root of x. Uh, I'm sorry, 5 is equal to the absolute value of x. So that means you can rewrite this just like we switched sides here. Recall this. We did, we did 25 is equal to x squared. We switched it to x squared is equal to 25. We do the same thing. 
absolute value of x is equal to 5. Now recall from the absolute value that this can be either 5 or this can be negative 5, right? Because we know the absolute value of 5 is 5 and the absolute value of negative 5 is the negative negated negative 5, which is giving you a positive 5, right? Because the absolute value of anything can be 0 or positive, right? There's no way that it's going to be negative. Thus, the x value can be also negative because the absolute value bar will make sure that it's going to be still positive, right? So there are two possibilities. So you see this method using the distance from a point to a line formula will give you the same thing, just like the distance formula did. If you know what to do, if you know what to plug in, if you know how to use these formulas, you will get the same results, okay? The same low chi of points. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.